Next up, I'm, I'm really, really delighted. I shall swap your slides over for you in a second. I'm really delighted to um, introduce Henry, who's the Senior Insights Manager from um, Tech Nation, who's come down from London um, on the sleeper last night um, to be here with us today. Um, so he's going to share a few words with us um, about Tech Nation. And um, yeah, over to you, if that's OK. Um, so yeah, do give Henry a warm welcome. Hello, um, it's lovely to be here, thank you. Um, I've never been to this part of the world, it's very, very lovely. Um, I'm, um, so, I'm Henry, um, I work for Tech Nation, um, thank you, who are the government-backed body um, here to accelerate uh, digital tech business across the UK. Um, do this two ways, we have a series of accelerator programmes for businesses of all different stages, everything from individual founders all the way up to big um, scaling and um, future IPO businesses. Um, we also are the authority on um, data, intelligence and insight on digital tech in the UK. Uh, I'm a data scientist working for Tech Nation, part of a small team of five, um, and we look at everything from labour markets, investment markets, kind of ecosystem analysis, all that kind of stuff. I love my job, it's really interesting. And, uh, this is the first year I was involved in the Tech Nation report. Um, the organisation brought in uh, uh, a number of four new staff to bring it all in-house. Um, this was our first year, um, designing everything from methodology through to how the data was consumed. Um, so yeah, connection collaboration, really the key drivers um, of, uh, of um, productivity within tech in the UK. Um, so, before I get going, um, I think it's um, just a bit of an overview of how we've uh, structured this report. So, the idea is it is an audit of tech in the UK, um, looking at the depth, breadth, um, and the nuances within uh, the ecosystem, both nationally and internationally, and all the different subtleties regionally, so right here in Cornwall, for instance. Um, there are five key areas everything from international competitiveness all the way through to jobs and skills, digital business, all of that kind of thing. So I'm going to run through, do a kind of whistle-stop tour of some findings, then a bit of a way about how you guys can get involved. <coughs> all of the data is open from this report, so it's all available. You can run as many SQL queries or play with it as much as you want, um, which is uh, good fun if you ask me. But anyway, um, so yeah, um, and it very much lives online. So I haven't come here with a whole load of um, uh, physical reports. It's uh, a whole series of JavaScript visualizations online, which you can do whatever you want with. So uh, get your phone or your laptop out. Um, so the UK um, is a very dominant nation when it comes to tech. There's been a very deliberate uh, industrial strategy to try and encourage it, particularly in the east end of London, and now what we see across the UK. So London is the third um, third most well connected um, global st um, global ecosystem. Um, looking at everything from international from connections, talent, investment, etc. The next European city is Berlin. In seventh, you see Silicon Valley and New York up there. Um, we are very highly connected. Um, highly connected. Um, we're blessed with a high connected uh, capital. Um, you'll also see 25% of the world's entrepreneurs, there is a, there are a um, significant relationship with other entrepreneurs elsewhere. This is, very, this is an industry, as we all know, as we are here today, it's very collaborative, people work together, meetups are a big thing, um, as is online, are, as are online communities. Um, and by its very nature, certainly all the programming languages I use are pretty much all open source, it lends itself very well to collaboration. So, we are recommending to get support and go international straight away. Um, particularly if you put the Brexit twang on it as well. And this is actually a very important thing for people to be doing. Um, so, expand your network, learn from new founders, get involved in DIT campaigns, the Go to Grow programme and the local chambers of commerce in your local areas. This is a key thing and actually something, as we speak to founders more and more so, isn't necessarily on founders' um, radars. 
um, straight away about going internationally. It's more about pumping a local market. However, um, the beauty of tech is that you don't necessarily have to do that. So digital tech business here in the UK. The cartogram on the right hand side is um, something that I found very interesting doing. So that's um, looking at the digital density across the UK and how that varies. Um, and as you can see, there's this, uh, the red obviously is the, uh, is the higher proportion. Um, this M4 corridor that you see, this kind of Silicon Alley as we might call it, um, is really the, the, uh, the backbone of productivity and dense tech in the UK. Places like Reading, Slough, Heathrow, Newbury, um, all the way up to Bristol and Swindon. Um, real, real dense clusters of tech, really high amounts of pro productivity as well. So in uh, Bristol, for instance, each tech worker on average is producing around £320,000 worth of turnover for their business or wherever their place of work is. Um, compare that to Manchester, that's around £110,000. So, digital suburbs are a thing. It's, there's this, um, I suppose, long-held view, and certainly I think you could say people within our organisation were uh, guilty of it, thinking that tech was something that only happened in Shoreditch or in the northern quarter of Manchester. And however, this just isn't true. There are many, many digital suburbs. And actually, they are the key drivers of productivity within this industry. And they are where, um, I suppose, the magic's happening. Um, other key outliers, Cambridge, Burnley, interestingly, um, all the way up to Livingston in Scotland, Enniskillen in Northern Ireland, um, and South End. So London has below average um, digital tech density as a proportion of the wider economy. Um, so dispelling myths. The productivity indicates is very interesting. Um, and there are, you can, you can pinpoint different reasons for this. Newbury at £304,000 um, a year per tech worker in terms of turnover. Um, that is the HQ of Vodafone in the UK. Um, where else have we got on there? Um, Telford is also up there, that's the UK HQ of Capgemini, so these are large consulting businesses based around tech. Um, Slough and Heathrow and Reading again, you've got the home of Oracle in the UK, Microsoft, etc. Um, so this M4 corridor is really becoming, um, so, uh, cementing its dominance. Um, we also looked at the mixture of, um, of age of business within these different areas. Um, I spent a lot of time in a, in a laboratory in uh, southwest London, curing all this data from the ONS, and in, soul destroying actually at the time. It's internetless room, but um, you got, what we got were these kind of pretty maps at the end of it, which again, all online, go online and get them. But you can see um, London very much a start-up um, ecosystem there. Um, where we work in the Silicon Roundabout in the East End is just a wash with co-working spaces, etc. Um, and then you look more at Bristol, where you see a more balanced, um, a more balanced ecosystem there. Same in, same in Manchester. So that's simply an analysis of the uh, the age of um, tech business. One thing. So. We're really encouraging um, organisations here to engage in corporates with new ways, um, and we're seeing more and more of it. Often the big five are now offering um, start-up pitching competitions and new ways for um, start-ups to engage with them. Uh, we think that's really important. Barclays Eagle Labs, the Wayris Accelerator are all um, accessible ways to get involved with corporates, and again, collaboration is the key part of that. Community perceptions, this has come from the survey that was put out to UK stakeholders within digital tech. Um, and we can see, in fact, by region, what the, um, the nuances are. So I know here within the Cornwall travel, to, it's all based around travel to work area. Um, so within, um, uh, within the local travel to work area here, um, within Truro and Redroof actually. Um, which is the cluster that is mentioned locally to here in the report. High speed internet was certainly seen as a very big positive there, and the lack of transport infrastructure was seen as one of the biggest negatives. And there are probably people in the room who answered that survey. Thank you very much. You are 
adding to the primary data collection of this, uh, this very report. And you can also play with it all online. All your responses, anonymized, are now online, um, which you can play with. Um, so you can see that the, within the southeast of England, there's very, there was often uh, an issue around uh, cost of living, unsurprisingly, and I think that is a um, systemic problem across the southeast and actually parts of the southwest of England as well. The biggest issue I think facing UK tech at the moment is the talent problem, um, and that ran true within this. Um, I'm currently looking at a data set which is every job advert from the north of England for the last three years, so seven million job ads. Um, digital tech jobs are paying around £13,000 more than the median average salary for the wider economy. There's 2.4 job adverts for every field position. Um, and it's a problem. And it's not just in technical roles, we're also looking at just tech firms themselves. We're seeing huge amounts of problems with recruiting sales staff and digital marketing staff as well. Um, and it's stifling productivity. So strengths perceived by um, the local tech communities across the UK, an appealing area, proximity to a university, having that talent <coughs> pipeline coming from a university is crucial. Um, you go to a cluster such as Cambridge, um, they've managed to create a really um, efficient way of, of creating a tech talent pipeline, um, sort of akin to what they have in New York City at the moment, um, which is um, allowing people to slot into firms um, and have some investment in them so that there's not this assumption that you're going to arrive with five years experience being able to do something straight away. But, um, you do have the uh, necessary know-how to be able to do that with some resource put behind you. Um, yeah. So, learn from peers, accelerate to grow. There are nuances across the UK, I think it's worth to say, in terms of the strengths um, and the challenges facing the tech ecosystem. Talent is systemic and ubiquitous everywhere, and I think I'd be surprised if that wasn't an issue being faced by founders in Cornwall. Collaboration, connectivity and culture. So this is looking at the kind of like hidden underwiring um, and less the official statistics um, behind that, but more looking at what's going on using web-based data. So GitHub, Meetup, Eventbrite, that kind of thing. Um, we use GitHub API to analyze all the repos across GitHub in the UK. JavaScript still prevails. That is also um, reflected in the meetup um, data as well. JavaScript is a real core component of, um, of meetups in the UK. Um, and yeah, it's the language of the day for front end development and some back end. Um, I also took all of Meetup data from across the UK and we use natural language processing to take all of the topics and then cluster them all um, so you can see exactly what's being discussed, um, who's discussing it and how many people are around that. Um, and we did it, that's the 400 largest in the UK um, and we also did it for 11 clusters across the UK as well, so individually, so a London network diagram, a Birmingham network diagram, etc. They're all online, you can all go and play with them. All of the data is free and open to use as well. In every location that we analyse, there is a large open source cluster. So that's the pink, pink that you see on the right hand side of the screen. Um, and another software development, so the green, and that's often things like Agile, um, Agile Scrum, and uh, discussions around that. Ways of working, if you like. Um, the blue being web design, although that's almost a front end development course, quite UXy, and there was quite a lot of creative crossover there as well. Um, and then there was, in quite a few places, particularly in Cambridge and in Edinburgh, there were um, these emerging themes of, well, emerging technology, so AI, blockchain, um, and various machine learning meetups, which were prevalent in, particularly in Cambridge and Edinburgh. <coughs> So, collaborate to accumulate, um, that kind of is obvious, um, but I, I, I do think that uh, where we see the, the, there's certainly correlation where we see the higher productivity and certainly the higher number of startup births is where we're seeing more meetup groups going on. Finally, jobs and skills, um, real issue. 
Um, there are two types of um, ways of looking at it. So you can either look at jobs within digital tech. So that could be an accountant working for a digital tech firm. Um, or you can also look at digital tech jobs. So that could be a PHP developer in a local council, for instance. Um, and you can look at how that uh, varies. Um, so overall, uh, digital tech jobs in the UK, there are 1.87 million, 1.07 million in uh, jobs in digital tech. So that's a large number of people, but also the digital tech economy is growing 2.6 times faster than the wider economy. So this is a really, really high, highly productive um, and uh, important industry that's really driving growth within the UK particularly at the time that the productivity crisis is really high on the agenda. Um, as a digital native, you can expect to um, earn far, far higher than the non-digital median's average salary. Um, this data comes from Zuna, who is an online job aggregation site. So they take XML feeds from all sorts of different places, your monsters, your reads, your LinkedIn's, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you can crunch all the numbers behind it. So that's all based on the jobs demand and real um, job adverts. We also looked at the demographics of UK tech. Um, there is a diversity issue in UK tech. It's, it's a bad one. Um, so currently, women are outnumbered four to one compared to men um, within uh, tech jobs in the UK. Um, and if you compare that to the rest of the wider economy, it's 49% women and 51% men. So there is a real problem. Um, there are some other interesting things. We also looked at age, and we also looked at um, ethnicity. Certainly, um, amongst people I often speak to, um, I think you can possibly accuse me of being slightly, at times of having been in a bit of a shortage bubble, but um, there was, um, a lot of people think, okay, well, young people work in tech. It's just young people. And actually, um, when it comes down to it, far, far greater number of people are over the age of 35 working in tech in the UK. There's only one place in the entire UK where there are more people under 35 than over 35, and that's Inner East London. Um, so, a bit of a reality check um, when that drops, certainly within our London event. So recruiting talent creatively. One of the things we're seeing more and more so um, are alternative skills providers. Um, so the likes of Makes Academy, Code First Girls, um, North Coders in the north of the UK who are doing coding boot camps and not necessarily just for technical skills but also around product managers, product designers, UX staff, um, which I think is a crucial, crucial um, strategy to being able to overcome this talent crisis that we're currently facing. All of this data that I've just mentioned, it's all open, um, and that's the first time ever. It's all on an online platform called data.world, which you can see there, um, uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, so you can take all of it, you can, there's a lovely SQL compiler there, or you can plug it into your favorite, you can plug it into R, Python, do some fun stuff in JavaScript, or just download it and play about with it in Excel, whatever it takes your fancy, um, and create your own bespoke cuts for right here in Cornwall or elsewhere in the UK, um, which has been really exciting. We've already had around um, uh, well over 100 um, people bookmarking the data. Quite a few academics have got involved. We're now using that work for their, for their work. and. Um, the policy crew as well are getting involved as well, so do. And if you have any questions about the methodology, which I'm uh, extremely proud about, but I realise it's a bit of an acquired taste methodology, I do come and have a chat. Um, definitely. Here, there are local cluster here in Cornwall, Drew and Redruth. Um, so there are 2,368 digital check tech jobs within that travel to work area. Um, I'll explain, travel to work areas are what we've used um, to geographically segment the entire UK. Um, and they're really kind of special. So unlike, say, um, a county boundary, which is quite arbitrary, um, travel to work areas are all based on census data. So they are genuine clusters of people. So 70% of people within a travel to work area 
both live and work in that place. They are genuine clusters of people. You can find all of the boundaries online. Um, yeah, so this is a general cluster of, uh, of tech within, um, within Cornwall. Um, yeah, 50 million digital tech business turnover. Um, it's worth saying that proportionally, um, Truro Red Roof is um, packs a punch, but I think just the sheer volume of people in other areas of, of, um, of the UK mean that um, it can sometimes uh, be slightly dwarfed, I suppose, by Bristol up the road, which, well, not up the road, but the kind of nearest large cluster. Um, so yeah, again, the strengths and challenges. Um, helpful tech community, appealing area, good internet speed. Good internet speed is the, that's one of the only places that I came up in the UK. That's very often one of the bad things. So, um, interesting. Bad transport links, that's a systemic problem we saw outside of the southeast. Um, so, yeah, tech communities are highly connected. Um, again, this is slight repetition, but I think it's really interesting looking at how big data, AI, machine learning, and actually more and more blockchain events are coming up and are springing up all over the UK. Two of our big focuses now are fintech and AI. So, we're on tour, if you fancy uh, coming again. Um, we're, going, we're going all over the UK. This is a lovely, free, this is a fringe event we've come to today. Um, but yeah, we're accommodating in Cardiff, but all the way, we're, our CEO says we've swapped our um, guitars for our laptops and going on tour, but anyway. Um, wonderful. Um, explore the findings online, it very much lives online. Um, I want to say a massive thank you um, to Software Cornwall and the left. Um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. So the um, Durham Red Roof, don't, the name in itself, um, if you press that, we can just, I can show you the actual boundary, because it may be where you live is actually within that boundary. Um, but as I said, 70% of people live and work in those boundaries. Um, so it may be that you're one of the lucky 30%, um, or it may be that where you live um, is actually within the boundary, and it's actually just quite a catch-all term. It's all based on the 2011 census data, so they looked at both where people's addresses of their workplace and their home, um, matched them up, and there was a very it was an academic at the University of Newcastle, um, and very cleverly used a load of um, classical machine learning to basically work out, um, draw these boundaries um, around where people both live and work. They're all. You can build them all out of lower level super output areas if you really want this. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll bring up the boundary for you. Just the effect is that we get fragmented, whereas I mean, I used to work in Cambridge, where, you know, there, there are villages and towns 10 miles away. They've got huge travels work They're there. included. Yeah. But here, although, I mean, a lot of people will travel 10 miles in Cornwall, but for some reason they get split into mm. pieces. Mm. Mm. I'll, I'll run it through with you, yeah. I think that the Exeter travel to work area is nearly as big as Cornwall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So we've done really well. That's what we need to kind of um, focus on. Brilliant. Good. Quick question. Um, have you been able to um, look at growth in particular areas and tie it to, um, I don't know, the, the, the frequency of grants or particular drivers that have driven the, the, the data, the changes in the data that you've been looking at? When you say particular, do you mean geographic areas or industries? Yeah, particularly Sorry, geographic, geographic areas. areas. I mean, um, obviously in Cornwall we've had a lot of European yeah, no, of course. investment and things like that, but I wondered if that's always what's driving it nationwide or whether that's just local here. So, I haven't looked at that. Um, however, the beauty of all the data being open and having a primary key, so we've got an ONS basically code for all of the geographies, you can very easily bring all of that data together and be able to look at it. Um, sounds fascinating. 
Um, have a chat afterwards and we should be able to bring something together and do that. Fabulous, thank you. So, um, yeah, awesome. thank you.